All right. We've all seen uh, evangelists on TV pacing back and forth a stage like a caged tiger and neck veins visible and sweat trickling down his cheeks and he shakes his finger at the auditorium ceiling and he thunders to his audience, will the Father in, in heaven permit one of his own children for whom the Savior died on the cross to ever fall into the depth of hell and become lost? I'm telling you right now, the answer is never. Give him praise and glory. Many professed born again evangelicals would respond with a collective amen, brother. To this man's statement, there is no doubt in their mind that the salvation is already a certainty. They believe they are destined for heavenly bliss no matter what they do or how they may sin between now and their last breath. As one evangelical described it, it is as if they have boarded a non-stop train bound for heaven. This faith train may pass through dark and perilous times, but it will never discharge a person with a reservation short of his glorious destination. The doctrine of eternal security, or as a lot of people call it, once saved, always saved, is a widely believed teaching although no such terms exist anywhere in the Bible. What the preacher says about the belief may on first glance sound plausible, but is he right? A representative passage, very popular with those who believe in being forever saved, is John 10, verse 27 through 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. See, they say. Once he saves us, we can never perish. No one can separate us from him. His word is absolute, and he cannot lie. Their statement cannot be denied. The question is, when does he grant us life everlasting? Are we saved immediately at our conversion? Is it ever possible to fall from grace? The issue of timing is the crux of the matter. A companion verse to John 10 verse 27 to 29 and a key that unlocks it is similar it's found in Matthew 25, verse 32, 3, and 4. Speaking of the Savior on the day of judgment. Matthew 25, verse 32. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand, and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The setting is Yeshua's statement, Is the earth at his second coming? When he returns, he will judge the earth, and at that specific time will reward the faithful, both living and dead, with salvation. He confirms this in Revelation 22 verse 12, showing the basis on which he gives rewards. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. And two verses later he adds in Revelation 22 verse 14, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Doing his commandments, obeying his laws, is what makes us worthy for eternal life, symbolized by the tree of life. The implied opposite then means that if we don't do his commandments, we will not have this special right to everlasting life. 
to be judged worthy by adhering to commandments and being rewarded according to works certainly doesn't square with the popular teaching that salvation is immediate, automatic, inedible for the chosen. Unless we understand the truth about when and how we are saved, resting in the false notion that our salvation is forever secure could give us false security and in fact jeopardize our eternal future. Some believe they have no choice. There are those who take this idea of eternal security even a step further. They believe that because salvation is all of Yahweh, you are saved whether you want to be or not. Even though salvation involves both you and Yahweh, even if you decide you don't want it, Yahweh will carry you through anyway because it is his will to do so. One such proponent explains it this way. Eternal security is the unbreakable relationship with the integrity of Elohim. Neither Elohim nor man nor angel can destroy the relationship which begins at salvation. There is no sin we can commit. There is no activity on our part that can neutralize or destroy it. It is something we have permanently and perfectly both now and forever. An even more extreme position promoted by men like Charles Stanley and Charles Rye say that even if a person becomes an unbeliever, that person will still remain saved. This teaching essentially takes away any free choice from the human beings. Yahweh may just as well have created humankind with the inability to sin. The whole idea of freedom to choose right over wrong that Yahweh has granted human beings since Eden is pointless in view of this extreme doctrine. He will save you in spite of yourself. But is that really the case? The scriptural truth that is not understood by man by many is that Yahweh does not save us in our sins. He saves us from our sins, from the death penalty that we, because of our sins, deserve. We cannot continue in sin and still expect him to redeem us for his kingdom. In fact, he makes it clear that he will not do so. In Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through Yeshua Messiah our Master. Sins must be repented of and no longer indulged in. If we are to in unrepentant sin, we will not be granted everlasting life. Yahweh does not reward sin. In 1 Corinthians 6.9 Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. By definition, Sin is breaking of any of Yahweh's laws. 1 John 3 verse 4. Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Clearly it does not clearly it does matter if a person remains true to Yahweh, and it matters very much whether he or she indulges in the sin of this world. Paul tells us in Galatians 6 verse 7, Be not deceived. Yahweh is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now what, you can even ask yourself, was Paul even sure? of his own salvation? 
Surely a man like the Apostle Paul, would wrote, who wrote the majority of the New Testament and had direct revelatory teachings from Yeshua in Galatians 1 verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Yeshua Messiah. Would he not know whether he himself had salvation assured? If the eternal security doctrine is true, then Paul, of all people, believed it and taught it, right? On the contrary. If you read the Apostle's own statements about the doubts that he entertained about his own life, and what he admonished about persevering and being faithful until the end. In 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means when I have preached to others. I myself should be a castaway. The word castaway is the Greek a dokimus. One disapproved by the judge as not having fairly deserved the prize. Philippians 3.10 That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I, I am apprehended of Messiah Yeshua. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Another version, a little bit simpler to understand, he's saying, all I want to know is Messiah Yeshua and the power of his resurrection. That is the way I can hope to take my place in the resurrection of the dead. Not that I have become perfect yet. <clears throat> I have not yet won, but I am still running, trying to capture the prize for which Messiah Yeshua captured me. I can assure you, my brothers, I am far from thinking that I have already won. You find that in the Jerusalem Bible. Second Corinthians 13.5 Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves. How that Yeshua Messiah is in you, except you be reprobates. Hebrews 3.14 For we are made partakers of Messiah, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Knowing exactly when the saints are saved will reveal the error of both the once saved, always saved doctrine and the popular understanding about being born again. Neither teaching is scriptural. Based on what the Bible says about how and when salvation occurs, this is how salvation actually works. What few today grasp is that saving is a process which starts with beginning, which starts with being begotten of the Holy Spirit at baptism and ends with being born again at the resurrection. An analogy about being saved is helpful. Let's say a bush pilot crashes his plane in the cold wilderness of the Arctic. Injured, he sends out an SOS, sets off flares and radios for help. After some days, he hears a distant drone of another plane. I'm saved, he says. But is he really saved? His exact location has not even been pinpointed by the rescuers. What he means is that he now has the hope of being saved. The same thing Paul said he had in Philippians 3. He is technically not saved until he is safe and recovering in a hospital bed. For all he knows, his rescue plane itself may hit bad weather on the way back and be forced down. 
The ambulance picking him up at the airport may crash on icy roads. He may succumb to his injuries. All sorts of things could happen between now and the time he is in fact saved and on his way to recovery. As the popular expression goes, it ain't over till it's over. Yeshua said that men would hate the truth, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. Matthew 10, 22, And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. We may have hope in sal of salvation, but if it isn't assured until the end, either the end of our lives or the end of this age when Yeshua comes to gather his elect, why? Because at any point, we could become apostate. We could fall from grace by slipping back into the world through its many sins and temptations. If that happens to us, we are in jeopardy. Because Yahweh does not save sinners. Rather, he saves those who have repented of sin and turned to walk in his ways. Yahweh said through the prophet Ezekiel in 18 verse 21, But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. We learn from, from uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16 that Yahweh will destroy those who once knew the truth, but become defiled. Know you not that you are the temple of Elohim, and that the spirit of Yahweh dwells in you? If any man defile the temple of Elohim, him shall Yahweh destroy. For the temple of Elohim is holy, which temple you are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in the world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Yahweh. For it is written, He takes the wise in their own craftiness. And again, Yahweh knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. And you are Messiah's, and Messiah is Yahweh's. Even though the last verse of this passage 23 says that we are Messiah's, Paul shows that, possible, that possibility still exists that we could fall. We see abundant evidence in scriptures that even though we are called his, we can still become debased through our choice to sin, and therefore jeopardize our eternal reward. In Romans 11:21, For if Yahweh spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of Yahweh, on them which fell severity, but towards thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Goodness means moral excellence. To fall from moral excellence is to disobey. Have not believed means to disobey also. So justified and sanctified is the key. Most who hold to the eternal security teachings dread what they call works salvation. They believe that Yahweh requires nothing of his people but faith alone. Any hint of the necessity of obedience sends them into a sudden attack or violent expression of distress. Certainly we are not saved by our works. The scriptures are clear on that. We are not justified by keeping the law. In Romans 3.20, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But by his grace, in Romans 3.24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Messiah Yeshua, 
Justification means just as if we had not sinned. Nothing we can do will earn us righteousness, a righteous standing in his sight, because we have all sinned and are nothing but filthy rags. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. Once we are justified by his grace, however, then we are set apart for a holy purpose, which is called sanctification. Through sanctification, Yahweh expects his people to live pure and righteous lives. And how are you going to know what to do? You have to read the Torah. Second Corinthians 7 verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of Yahweh. Notice the verse does not say, let Yahweh cleanse us, but rather, let us cleanse ourselves, live purely, overcome the poles of sin. In the same vein, we are commanded to in Philippians 2.12, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? If one is already saved, there's no fear and trembling would be necessary. Neither would there be a need to work out any salvation. A sanctified individual not only lives a life apart from sin, but also is obedient to what Yahweh tells him to do. In 1 John 5 verse 3, For this is the love of Yahweh, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. He has commanded his people to keep his laws, including his feasts and Sabbaths. They do not because they are earning their salvation, but because they now live for him and are in the process of taking on his very nature. We reflect his nature when we do what he would do and follow his direction. He is the father and we his children. We obey him just as we obeyed our earthly parents. We don't obey our parents for a reward, but because they are our parents and they demand obedience. Our love for them makes us want to obey them. Backsliders slide on out. Yahweh is adamant about the failure of those who once accepted him, but now turn back to sin. He will not save them in spite of themselves. He will, in fact, judge them. The prophet Ezekiel warns in Ezekiel 18.24, But when the righteous turns away from the righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? All his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he has trespassed, and in his sin that he has sinned, in them shall he die. Does this passage just apply to ancient Israel? Ezekiel and other prophets prophesied not only for their day, but also for our day and beyond. Yahweh does not change. Malachi 3, six For I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. What was true for, of his people anciently, it's true for his people today. He has but one standard. Paul said that all that happened in the Old Testament was for our examples. 1 Corinthians 10.11 Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Backsliding is a hazardous to the people of Yahweh today as it was in Israel back then. In Hebrews 6 verse 4, 
For it is impossible for, for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of Yahweh and the power of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of Yahweh afresh and put him to an open shame. Stark and serious words. To throw away the truth once you know, once you know it, is a, as grave as it gets. Obviously, such a re, re, result would leave no room for being eternally saved. The Bible is filled with assurances that Yahweh will reward his chosen according to their deeds. Both an obedient life and a sinful life will be rewarded accordingly. In Romans 2 verse 6, Who will render to every man according to his deeds? To them who, by patient continuance in well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. The final book of the Bible shows that the saints are those who keep the commandments and have the faith of Yeshua. Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh and the faith of Yeshua. Faith and obedience go hand in hand, clearly. It is the obedient who are faithful until the end who are saved. Hebrews 5, 9, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Not those who flout his commands and live the life they choose, still expecting a kingdom reward. With that, yeah, we bless you with eyes to see ears to hear his truth. Yeah, we both.